So, <clears throat> good afternoon sir. So, I am JR Mikatuan from BSMT2 section Betalges. So, in this video, I'm going to explain or discuss my PowerPoint presentation about the common damage or defects that may occur on the watertight transverse bulkhead situated at the end of the dry, dry cargo holds of the bulk carrier. So, what is the main problem that may cause defects or damage on the water type of the bulk carrier or bulk head? So, the main problem or the cause is excessive weight space stage corrosion uh, in particular at the mid height and bottom of the bulk heads which may look in deceptively good condition. So, these are the three examples of the more common damage and defects or defects that may occur. So the first is the fracture, fracture of the boundaries of the corrugation and bulkhead tools, particularly in way of shield plates, shader plates, deck, inner bottom, etc. The second is the buckling of the plating or corrugation, leading to failure and collapse of the bulkhead under the water pressure in an emergency situation. The third or the last is the excessive wastage corrosion. In particular, at the mid height of the bottom and bottom uh, mid height and bottom of bulkheads, which may look in deceptively good condition, this is created by the corrosive effect of cargo and environment. In particular, when the structure is not coated. So these are the pictures. So this is a picture of the structure, the buckling of plating, and the corrosion of the ship. So. These are the respect special attention should be given to the following areas. Uh, area of the bulkhead plating adjust, adjacent to the shell plating, bulkhead trunks which part form part of the bending, filling and discharging arrangement between the top side tanks and the hopper or hopper tanks. Bulkhead plating and weld connection to the lower and upper stall shell plates. Weld connection of stall plating to the lower and upper or upper stool, shell plates, and inner bottom in way of weld connection to topside tanks and hopper tanks. Any areas where coatings have broken down and there is evidence of corrosion or wasted, it is recommended that random thickness determination be taken to establish the level of diminution. Then other structure Diaphragms inside the stools, particular at their upper and lower weld connection. And this is the action so we would take it as a chief officer to, to avoid that the terminal and the terminal effect of bulk carriers due to corrosion, fatigue, and improper cargo handling, fracturing of the structural members of transverse bulk head of a bulk carrier are first is side shell plating. Second is connection of bulkhead plating to side the side shell. The third is connection of the side shell frame and end brackets to to the shell plating and hopper side tank plating by close up inspection. Last is the connection of the side shell frame and end brackets to the shell plating and top side tank plating. So these are the actions to control the structural stresses and so first is routing or routing, plan, maintenance, and inspection of structural members of cargo holds and hatch covers. The second is identification of success, uh, susceptible uh, areas prone to fatigue and stresses. A third is ensure accessibility of the area to be surveyed. With due regards to the area under inspection, shall be clean and well lit. The fourth is careful planning of the service to be undergone with all personnel involved. The last is where a fracture with which not be caused, been caused by contact damage is found in the main hull structure on one side of the ship, corresponding the structure of the opposite side should be examined to see if a similar fatigue has occurred. Fractures of this nature are of concern. 
especially where corrosion is associated with failure and may have been contributing cofactor. So these are the 10, uh, 10 structural surveys include. So first is routine inspection, second planning surveys, the third is surveys of non-defects, the fourth is classification surveys, the fifth is annual surveys, the sixth is intermediate surveys, the seventh is special surveys, the eighth is condition surveys, the ninth is CEP surveys, and the tenth is the life extension surveys, or etc. So, pag take crack of steel plating. So, these are the um, problems or the situation. When fatigue o cracking occurs at the point such as hatch cover where stresses are locally high, such cracking is res the result of cumulative damage caused by cyclic loading of structure or an invariable, invariable starts at welded joints. The second is the fatigue life is the time required in service for the structure to experience enough stress cycles for a crack to occur. A bulker is so designed that with a proper maintenance, cracking should not occur until a fatigue life span of 20 years. The third is fatigue life lifespan once used use up cannot be regained except by completing replacement of welded joints. Therefore, it is very essential that the welded joints of, of an overstressed structure are replaced before proceeding with life exterior surveys or programs. And the last is, putty cracking have been most frequently observed in the bracket toes at the connection of the main frames to the hopper and top side tanks and in the boundaries of the vertically corrugated transverse bulkheads with upper stools, lower stools, and top side tanks. So corrosion or structural de deterioration. So these are the major barriers preventing structural deterioration on ships, especially in every corrosive environment of water ballast tanks and to a slightly lesser extent extend cargo holds is the tank or hold coating. Since the establish of ASP, water ballast tanks and CH of all new ship must be fully coated. Such coatings should be hard coating and preferably light in color. Importance of assessing defects and damage to cargo spaces. So first is it is important that the protective coatings in cargo holds and water ballast tanks are maintained. Therefore, it is very imperative that the cargo holds and deck areas should be inspected by ship's deck officers upon completion of cargo operation to identify any signs of physical damage, corrosion, or coating damage to the ship's, the ship's structure. The second is where hull damage is identified, which may affect the integrity of the hull structure and seaworthiness of the ship. It is reported accordingly to the classification society. The third is the external hull structure and protective coatings in the cargo hold adjacent. Double bottom spaces are vulnerable to damage when the cargo is discharged by using grubs. Grubs are made from toughened steel material and when carelessly used can cause considerably uh, considerable uh, considerable damage to the ship's structure and chipping or the sharp indentations and the local buckling or detachment of the side frames and end brackets at the lower connection could lead to cracking of the side shell plating which would you or would allow the increase of water into the cargo spaces. The protective coating may, which may be required to be applied in the cargo hold are also subject to deterioration caused by the corrosive nature of, of the cargo. High temperature cargoes, cargo settlement during the voyage and abrasive action of the cargo. 
also corrosion when uh, will weaken the ship structure and may eventually seriously affect the ship structural integrity. The severity of the corrosion caused by a structural member may not be easily detected with, without close-up inspection or until the corrosion causes serious structural problems such as the collapse or detachment of hold frames and resulting in cracks propagating in the side shells of side shell of side shield or plating so that's all sir thank you